and I have seven o'clock on in in Arcata, so I'm going to get this party started. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you. Today is the 29th of January. We're already through a month. We just burned through it. Don't know how these things happen, but they do. So reminding us today of our vision and our diversity values. And I think I'm wondering, you know what? It just occurred to me, um, Mike, Mike here? There you are. Um, I'm here. I did not send um, the link this morning to our guest. So can, can you forward that to him really quick? Do you have the, can you do that? Yes, I can do that. Good, thank you. And I apologize. And when he gets here, we will um, introduce him. Are there any other guests here? Hi, Janice. John's here, hi. Sari is here with Interact. Oh, good. Yeah, she's on my second screen. Say hello to us. Good morning. How are you, Sari? Morning. I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Anything you want to tell us about uh, Interact? Um, I don't know. There's not that much new going on right now. We're doing Coats for the Cold. We're trying to figure some stuff out with improving the senior lawn at Arcata High, but it has to go through so many people to get permission. So we're still working on that. Yeah. Do, um, can you tell us a little bit about Coats for the Cold? So if our members want to um, get involved with that, they have the update information. Are you there? Ian is here too, maybe he can. Yeah, hi Ian, you wanna say hello? Do you, can you share about the Coats for the Cold? Um, I'm not quite as involved as Coats for, in Coats for the Cold as Sarah is, but um, Coats, Coats for the Cold is basically um, a program where um, people who have extra coats that are nice and new can give them to um, interact and we'll sort through them all and like just make sure that they're in good condition and distribute them to people who need coats. Okay. And do you know where we we can deliver these if we want to give coats? Um, I know you can deliver them to Arcata High, but I'm not the person to ask for that. I think sorry. Okay. And AJ, AJ just let us know he has a bin at his bank. So that's that's a good go-to spot for our members. So thanks, AJ. Um, great. That's really great. Uh, yeah, you can uh, deliver coats. Uh, we're collecting all the way through the 31st and then we'll be done. So I, I believe that's Sunday. Um, and uh, there are locations at most of the grocery stores are a pretty good place to donate, Wild Berries, um, the co-op, things like that. Uh, we're looking for new and gently used coats, but um, everything we get, we make sure it goes to somewhere. Great. Well, thank you. Welcome, Ian, and welcome, Sari, to our meeting. I know you lost your Wi-Fi, but, but it sounds like you're still there somewhere, somehow. Um, great. Okay. We're going to um, come back to that. We have a, somebody who's going to say hello to us, but I, was, I tricked him, and I didn't send him the link to get in the meeting, so bad on me. See, when you're in, you're, when you're a short timer like I am, you start to flake out and forget the important things. So um, it's, it's just downhill from here, guys. You'll be so happy when Ian becomes your president. I'm going to make it, make it, make it. Really? <laughs> Five months is short time? Come on, Maggie. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I know, that's lame, but, but okay, I'll wait a month before I say that. Um, so let's get into some recognition. Um, I, I realize that, that being able to control the meetings the way I, I have um, with this system, that, that you guys haven't had much opportunity to, to heckle me or anything. So um, if anybody wants to say anything that they've been holding back um, or wants to heckle me in some 
some way throughout the meeting, you're welcome to do that. It, it, the cost is $25 towards your Paul Harris. Um, so if you wanna do that, um, I know that doesn't make it free, but hey, uh, it's, it's good for you. It's good for you and your Paul Harris and feel free. I will, um, I'll just take it, I'll take it like a president is supposed to. I know, I know, uh, John. John, you're out there, and I know that you've got some good, good lines that you might, you've been holding back on all, all season, all year. So, so we're going to jump into some gratitude recognitions this morning, and we have Nick and Terry who um, are going to share with us a little bit. Who would like to go first? I will. Okay. If that's okay. Um, I thought a lot about this all week, and my list is really long because um, I like to practice gratitude, but I'm going to shorten it just for the sake of time. I'm grateful for my husband. He um, takes care of me in, in so many ways, and I often feel like I don't deserve him, but I'm glad he doesn't uh, realize that most of the time. I'm grateful for my two cats, Waterloo and Westminster who are, Waterloo's the funniest cat I've ever had. I've had cats my whole life and he just cracks us up. I'm very grateful that next um, month is my 29th year as a Rotarian. And I'm extra grateful that I'm in this club. I was in a call, on a call yesterday with some other past district governors from around our zones talking about membership. And um, everything that was an issue for what's going on in their districts is not happening with our club. We are doing so well through this pandemic and it's out to everybody who's looking out for the members we don't always see and keeping up with our projects and our fundraising. So I'm grateful for all of you. I, I do miss the coffee and bacon in person, but you know, it's a small thing, a first world problem. And finally, I am really, really, really grateful that Marty and I took our dream trip to Japan almost two years ago. I don't know when we'll have that opportunity to travel again. And kind of every day something reminds me of how lucky we were to get to go. It was, um, it was brilliant in every way. You know, you don't always know that you're in the midst of something grand when you are. You can look back and say, gosh, that was great. But every single moment we realized that we were having a fabulous time. Um, and I nominate Jennifer for next time. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. That was really nice. Um, Nick. All right, sorry, I was doing Ravel. Um, I would like to also say that I am grateful for this club. Uh, my worry is going forward in my life, going to a different city or something, I won't be able to find a club like this. And therefore, Rotary will be different for me. Um, so I'm grateful for the time that I have here in this club and um, spend it all with you. Um, and personally, I even during this pandemic, or especially because of this pandemic, I'm grateful for the more intimate time that I get to share with my friends. Um, I'm not at a crowded place with my friends, just kind of casually talking to them. I'm able to actually have a real conversation and get to know people. Um, personally, I, I think that that's a better connection and I, I'm grateful for that. I'm also grateful for the time that I have to myself to work on whatever it is that I want to work on, um, whether to read a book or paint my house or do whatever I'm doing. Um, I don't have to justify why I don't wanna go anywhere because there's a pandemic, which is really nice. Um, so, uh, those are the, the things that stand out the most to me. Um, I'm going to nominate Dustin. 
And if he's on here, he probably already knew that I was probably going to dominate him. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you, Nick. All right, so Jen and Dustin, you're on for next time. And if, um, if Dustin's not here, I can only see the half of you, but I will let her make sure he knows that. Okay, we're going to jump back. We invited uh, a special guest to give us, oops, to give us a little information about a program, um, his, his ACORN classes. Uh, Jack, welcome. Good morning, everyone. I guess you're all muted. Well, good morning anyway. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm Jack Morellis. I am an administrator and now currently a teacher again at um, Arcana High School. I'm an administrator for the high school district. And um, I appreciate the opportunity to talk briefly about ACORN. Let me just fire up uh, my um, timer here. And I promise I will be done talking. I'm going to be done in, I'll make sure, actually in three minutes. We'll just do this right. Um, anyway, so um, ACORN, we've, in case you hadn't heard, there's a pandemic. And um, we at the high school district, traditionally have a lot of our freshmen that will transition to the high school and they struggle. This year is no different. Uh, well, this year is worse. Um, traditionally, we ran the numbers a little while last year and um, these aren't dropouts, but the kids who start high school as freshmen, we've usually lost about 30% of them from the comprehensive high school by the first day of their junior year. And that's, we do a good job locally of getting them into alternative ed and the continuation and the independent study into the uh, charters and things. So they get their diplomas, but what they miss out is on is all the things that make a comprehensive high school a rich experience. Now that could be football or tiddlywinks or cross country, but it's also when I wear, I'm a career tech guy among other things. It's also your shop classes, your maker's class, learning the electronics, it's your biology lab, it's the fine arts programs and all of that. And for a lot of our kids, this is how they make connections to people like you, Rotarians, who as it comes time for them to get their first jobs, really can give them a leg up. And so um, this year in particular, we had enormous attrition and um, our, um, not attrition, but just a lot of kids who were floundering with the online learning. So we went out and recruited, um, Shanghai might be a more accurate technical term for it, but um, we ended up identifying and recruiting about 18 kids into what we're calling in the ACORN classroom. It's a self-contained classroom. We're in the fine arts building at Arcata High. Let me see if I can share my screen with you real quickly. Oh, if, oh, um, if, Perfect. Thank you. Give me one second. I'll just show you where the fine arts building. They're all um, they're all um, sitting there at uh, distance. And uh, let me make that bigger for you real quick. How do I do this? Um, well, anyway, there we go. If you can see it, uh, there they are. They're fighting. Each kid has a table and all of that. So we're masked with our KN95s and the rest. And um, it's um, it's going very well. The kids, we're going to catch them up. So come June, come June 10th, we'll be at. 60 units, which is the big deal. And, and it, it, if kids fall behind, it's astonishing the effect it has, and it's not a good effect. LA Unified, they ran a big study a decade ago. Kids who got through their freshman and sophomore year on tar to graduate, 96% of them graduated from LA Unified schools. That says a lot. That's, there's a lot of challenging places there. And so we don't want these kids to be able to torpedo themselves at the end of their freshman year and be so far behind, they can't catch up. My ask to you is this, Wednesdays are all about um, field trips, service, going out in the community and seeing jobs and things like that. And if you are interested, I would love, I'm looking for work for the kids to do. We're still kind of arcade bound. Uh, we can't really get in the vans yet and go places um, because we don't have a protocol in place. But I'm looking for work for the kids to do on predominantly Wednesdays, but we can be flexible. The schedule's flexible. I'm looking for opportunities for them. If you've got a business, I'm trying to show them there's so many opportunities in the trades as well as other things. And you'd be willing to have a group of us walk through with KN95 masks and socially distance and all of that, just trying to show them what's out there. So there we go. I'm sorry, I went over, I went over three minutes, but under four. <laughs> That's fine. Thank you, Jack. Uh, I, yeah, we, we, Mike thought it would be nice to have 
Jack come and talk to us about this project and this, this, this need. So please, if there's something that your business can do to, to tell them a little bit about what it is that you do. And if you're in Arcata, especially that, that would really make it, make it great. Yes, Mike. Um, you know, Jack and his kids could even do um, an hour or two cleanup in, totally. in town yep. kind of thing. Yep. Uh, besides um, on-site visits with various businesses, uh, there's a lot of different variables. These, <clears throat> these freshmen are open to seeing what's available out there, what possible future things could be part of their lives, and so on, okay? Yeah, absolutely. That's it. And again, just anything we can do where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to let them experience and hopefully it'll sink into their heads that, you know, doing things for people feels good and being nice is nice. And, um, and there's a, there's a, there's an intrinsic reward we get when we actually go out and, you know, and do good things and, and serve the community. And so um, anything we can do to help grow that muscle in their head is, um, would be wonderful. So that's, that's really it. If you've got questions, um, feel free. You can send Mike an email. He'll forward it on to me. Oh, I'll put my email in the chat. Never mind. Um, and then my and my cell phone number. Um, and yeah. So again, it's um, our schedule is really flexible. One of the parents asked me what the curriculum was. They said, "I don't know yet. We're still building it, but um, we're gonna we're gonna get the kids caught up." And so that's really what we're up to. It's um, it, it's a lot of fun, and it's um, and it's it's rewarding. So that's it. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate jumping in on your time and. If there's nothing else, I'm going to jump back to my other meeting, if that's all right. Thank you, Jack. We really appreciate it. Thanks for Thank being here. All right. So, Lori, how are we doing? I haven't walked in the last rainy days. I've been a bad girl. Great question. Sorry you caught me off guard. I'm checking. I haven't walked either since Sunday, I think. It looks like... Ooh, I I went down in there. Ray Noggle is at the top. Ray is at almost 69 miles. With Vanessa right behind him at 65. Romeo wow. at 62. It's incredible. We now have... Uh, 11 people on here uh, trying to go for that 100 or maybe 300 miles. Um, if you're a walker, don't compare yourself to the runners. It's, it's all good. It's, it, we're celebrating everybody's out there uh, getting some movement and uh, what's, what's the phrase, a body in action stays in action. That's for sure. And a body on the couch stays on the couch. I could verify that. Um, I got to walk with Stephanie on Monday, which was fun. Uh, so we went together and, and did two and a half miles. And, um, you know, there's a differential in, in our, leg, our leg length. So what we did to balance that out is we walked, we walked, she might have walked a little faster than normal. I might have walked a little slower, but we figured out that if I talked a lot, I would be winded. So it worked out. <laughs> We just talked the whole time. So that was fun. I enjoyed it. Um, so yeah, buddy up with somebody that and make that commitment. That that definitely makes it happen. So thank you, Lori. Thanks everybody who are out there uh, braving the weather and, and running. I know Ray is Ray's Ray's a runner, so he's he's probably um, he could have you could have I mean sixty nine miles, that's a long trip. Uh, anyway, thanks Lori. I clock a whole mile just doing a Costco trip. So put it on wherever you're walking. Yeah. Oh, I put it on and I mean, I was doing it in my office one day um, just to see. And when I looked at the map, it had just this little kind of mess of, of me going like this all around in my building and sometimes outside my building, just the way it did. It, it was very funny, but um, so we have a, a wearable shoe drive happening. Um, and Romy, I, I, I don't know if you want to share anything about it. I've got the information up here. The shoes you see are the shoes that got me through my Peace Corps um, where I walked everywhere. These shoes would not be appropriate for donating because they are entirely 
dead. But the idea, I, had, I needed a picture of shoes and I had that. So tell us a little more. You, that's what I know. Um, Alex Stillman just said, Romy, you got connections. Could you forward this? And when Alex Stillman asked me to forward information, I forward information. <laughs> so um, uh, it's, it's for Arcata High Safe and Sober. Yeah, I, I think this is really creative. I'm not sure how it will make the money that they want, but I love to know that these shoes aren't going in the landfill. They're going somewhere where they might be refurbished and do good. That's right. So, so now is a chance. And again, they don't want, they want wearable shoes. Um, not, you know, if you wouldn't wear them, don't donate them, I think is the way. If they're so, if they're so nasty that you wouldn't even wear them anymore, please don't do, use this as a way to get rid of them. And um, they just simply go on Alex Stillman's porch. She's right here, uh, just a block down from Wildberries on H. Super easy. And backpack. boots, Craig, oh. um, I, I'm sure boots, yes. Oh yeah. And, yeah, Terry, I would bet flip flops too. Yep. So we had our backpacker for kids folks put it together. And um, thank you to Sarah and, and uh, Charlie. And who's on next week? Next week is Mike and Charlie um, Jordan. They're gonna do it at Kinetic Coffee. Oh, nice, okay. And then we don't have anyone signed up for the following week, but I'm sure somebody will step forward. But we're getting pretty covered for the rest of this quarter. That's awesome. Great. Thank you, everyone. Yes. And uh, when you do it, send me a picture of, of your team so I could post it. This is free, uh, a free advertising, I guess, of who you are and what you did. Thank you, guys. Here's another project we have. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to say share anything about this? I had to, um, I couldn't put the whole PDF up, but I put up this. Um, sure. Yeah, so um, my women in GHD group, so our women group within GHD wanted to do a project, uh, one that helped the community, but two also sort of brought awareness to women's issue in a um, really male oriented company. And so we decided to reach out and help the Raven project. So we're collecting period supplies of so pads, tampons, and I think somebody from Rotary is sending me something. I'm not sure. I'm getting something from Amazon to the Raven project to my house. If you sent it, uh, please send me your name and address because we want to do thank you letters. Um, but I've gotten little bags for, you know, carrying this stuff. I've gotten some vitamins and just, it's a huge need. If you've got, I know I have a teenage daughter and the amount of time and money I spend, you know, getting feminine supplies is huge. So um, if you can send it, that'd be great. That's it. Uh, drop it off at my house. There we go. Yeah. And the address for that is on 1835 Roberts Way. Thank you for organizing this, Rebecca. This is important. It really, it, it's, it, you know, when you're trying to decide how to spend what little money you have, this is a problem. Um, so I, I invited some of, if you're on Facebook, you probably got in an invite from me for my birthday fundraiser this year. We're raising funds for our club for um, black and indigenous people of color youth. And um, we're combining the funds raised for that with the funds uh, that we are raising with the mask sales. And um, if you wanna contribute to that today, you can do it to Venmo. You can Venmo money to that. And um, I'm gonna remind you, oops, let me see what happened there. Yes. So um, they're beautiful, by the way. They're really cool. Um, uh, Barbara has done incredible work. Amanda has helped. Um, they bought all these great fabrics. This one has um, has hands. Here's one that says Black Lives Matter. They're double. They're thick. They're they're incredibly well made. Um, there's a number of other great fabrics. Do you have those fabrics? There they are. You, um, Barbara will will custom. You can custom order any of these fabrics to make the masks. Fifteen dollars, and because folks donated the money to buy this 
great fabric and Barbara and Amanda too have, have volunteered all their time. It means every penny of that $15 goes to um, the term BIPOC, like, like Maggie just said, um, Black, Indigenous, People of Color, youth education programs right here in our community. So it's just a wonderful way. You need a mask anyway. 15 bucks is great for this beautifully well-made masks and they're great gifts as well. Yeah, I just ordered two more because the ones I ordered before I gave them all away and I'm tired of the masks I have and these are beautiful. So they are and, beautiful. And they're also so able to to customize them to your face. There's that better than many masks that I've um I've come across. We've all become mask experts, you know, kind of like, well, that's not <laughs> right. We're all connoisseurs. If you're a connoisseur of masks, yeah, this is the one you Barbara want. Barbara tapers I, it so it fits your upper cheek and your lower. Yeah, they're really they feel great. They're they're it's a great pattern, super good quality fabric, um, and with a great message. 